A few additional thoughts that I have regarding your master project file is, as you recall in the level one training video, we talked about the WBS or work breakdown structure, which the definition of it is it's a hierarchy of tasks that are represented by numbers that identify that unique place of each task within the structure. So for example, I've got a task here, but it seems no different than the task here, except for this one's indented. I could define it by adding the outline numbers to it by saying this is two, and this is 2.1 as a subtask or a derivative of the summary. 2.2, 2.3, then we go to 3, 3.1, 3.2, and so on. So if you want to be able to go ahead and use the default outline numbering system in the uh, master file, again, come up here, click on the Tools menu, go down to Options, and then on the View tab, come down here and check Show Outline Number, click OK, and there's your work breakdown structure. Pretty simplistic. In other words, you've got your 1, you've got your 2, then the hierarchy is 2.1, the subtask to the summary, and then it repeats or it starts over again down in the second project. We'll notice that the uh, inserted projects are broken down here as this is the second project and this one's the first one. Well, what if I go ahead and create my own custom WBS code, which also defines this is the first project on all the uh, tasks for this project and this is the second project for all the tasks on the second project here. In other words, what I would do is I'd go ahead and create a WBS code that says this is all project one and then I'd have a dash and continue on with the work breakdown structure so project one dash two project one dash two point one project one dash two point two and then when I came down here this of course would be down here project two dash two project two dash two point one and so on so I could tell whenever I'm looking up here or below here or in my reports what project I'm in and not just by the actual title of the project okay so in order to do this, I need to be able to set up the WBS codes at the individual project file level. In other words, I need to go into the individual project files here and set it up for PowerPoint. And then let me scroll up. Go to the individual file of Outlook and set it up. And then once I set it up in those two individual project files, then I can come in here and I'll show you how to set it up for the master project. So let me go ahead and close out of the master project and say yes, we'll save it for all of them click open. Let's go to our first individual project file which is Outlook. That's the first um, project within the uh, master file. Double click on that. And then to define the WBS codes for this project, come up here, click on the project menu, go down to WBS and let's define the code. Now there's several ways you can define the code. You can click on the drop down arrow and say you want it the typical number order as you saw in the default outline, you know 1.1, 1.2 and so on. You can use letters, lowercase characters, I'm going to use numbers, okay? And then do I want a project code prefix? Well, yes, I do. As you recall, this is going to be my project one. So I can type in, or it's a sub project within the master project. I could say sub project one dash, and then I'll have the code. Now you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can actually call it Outlook 07 or the actual task name here and type it in, but we'll continue on with this format and know that you can define the project code any way you'd like. So there's sub project one dash and the reason why I put spaces in there is because up here in the code preview uh, what you see is what you're gonna get so if I didn't put any spaces here and I collapsed them all here well that may work for you but again it's sub project one is the prefix code dash and then the actual code there's not a lot of space there so I'm gonna go ahead and give it some space click OK be sure to save my work Let's go ahead and close out of this project, open up the second one, which is PowerPoint, double click, project to WBS to define the code. Again, click on the drop down arrow, we want numbers, and this will be sub project 2 dash space. So you can see up in the preview code, sub project 2 dash, and then it'll actually have the work breakdown or outline numbered format. Okay, click OK, be sure to save it, close out. It's really easy to set up, it's just understanding what we're doing here. Let me go back and open up the master file now, double click. And so I have the individual WBS codes set up for the individual projects here. Now I want to set up for the master. Come up here, click on the project menu, go down to WBS, define the code. Click on the drop down arrow, and this time I'm going to use letters. Again, you can use letters, numbers. Let me come up here and click up here, and there's the code preview, it's going to be a letter. So what that means is that for each subtask here in the master file, and the subtask is, of course, the separate projects, there's project one, project two, 
it's going to letter them as project A and project B. But let me make sure that I define it as the master project outline dash space and then click OK. Now we have everything set up. I've got my work breakdown structure code customized in my individual project files. Then I've customized one for the master file here. Now when I want to display them all, you have to come up here and insert it as an individual field or column here by right clicking on the column header of any column that you see there. Go down to insert, type the W to get us to the W's. There's WBS. Go ahead and select it. Click OK. And there we go. Let me go ahead and double click between the two column hitters to do a best fit for the WBS column field and let's scroll down. So it's pretty cool if you look at it here. We got subproject 1-1 and you can see I didn't give it a space it looks like after that like I did down below in, uh, when I did the WBS codes for the uh, project file PowerPoint. So there's subproject 1, all the 1's here. Here's all the twos, and then after the twos, it actually breaks it down by the default, which is 2.1, which you can see over here in the outline number as well, 2.2, 2.3, and so on. And then for the master project, notice it gave it master project A, master project B. You could have used a number and called it 1 and 2, which is, well, what you see over here, there's 1 and there's 2. But this is another way to actually break down your project and using the WBS codes and defining them and saying, okay, I want this so I know where I'm at to be subproject 1 and subproject 2 and go off of this column view here. Okay, another thought that I have with my master project file is what about reports? Let's go ahead and come up here and see what our reports look like for our master project. Click on the report menu, go down to reports. Let's go ahead and do a quick overview, double click on that. And we just want the basic project summary of our master, double click on that. And let's go ahead and click in to zoom in here. Now these are the totals for the master project. The start date is August the 1st and it ends the uh, 18th. Now as you recall those two separate projects start at the same time. Okay? And here's the total cost between both project and the uh, total hours. Okay? A combination of both. In fact, let me come up here and close out of here. Close out of there. And I'm going to come up here and right click to zoom in so I can see my entire project over here in the Gantt chart. And what you can do here is that I can go ahead and link this project up to this next project and continue on. If I link the last tasks here to the beginning of this task, it's going to push this out. Now remember, what you do in the master is going to affect in the single project files, but I want to show you that you can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the last task in the first project, hold down the control key and select the first task in the second project, and go ahead and link them together. Okay. Now look at this. Instead of starting at the same time, which was August the 1st, it now picks up where the first project left off, which was September the 18th, supposedly when that gets finished. Okay. Of course, I can come up here, right-click to zoom, and save the entire project and click OK, and it tries to scrunch it in there as best it can. Now, with this in mind, if I go ahead and click Save, and I say Yes to All, let's go ahead and open up PowerPoint 07 and see if it begins on September the 18th. Go ahead and click on the Open button. Go ahead and double click on PowerPoint, and there it is, September the 18th, way over here. Close out. Now let's look at the project summary report, okay? Because it should have ended on the 18th, but because it's going to be a project summary report of the master file, it should show us the end date of November the 4th. Again, report to reports, overview, double click, double click project summary, click to zoom in, and there it is, it finishes. November the 4th. Go ahead and close out. Close out here. And one final thought here is that if you're having trouble when you're scrolling down through here which project that you're in, I can't remember if I'm in project 2, like what sub project 2 is that like PowerPoint, Outlook, and the tasks go on and on, you can go ahead and insert the project field and that will help you to be able to identify the tasks that belong to each sub project or what the name of the sub project is. Just come up here and right click on any of the column headers, go down to insert column, type in the letter P so we can get to the P's, and then scroll down. There's project, select it, click OK. Go ahead and double click in between the two column headers and there you go. So at any time, of course, wow, I mean look at that, such a long name, we have to expand it. But any time down here you're looking at the task, you're like, well, let's see, it's sub project 2, but what's the name of that? Oh, it's PowerPoint. In fact, you don't have to expand it that far. If you can just get the PowerPoint portion of it, or the OINT, that may be good enough for you. In any case, scroll up here, and there's Outlook right there.
Let me stretch it out just a bit. So at least this way, you got the subproject name next to each task if you get lost and you have a lot of subprojects that are really long and you need to know which one you're looking at or which task belongs to which subproject. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.